Have you ever wondered how your favorite chocolate snack, Kit Kat, is made? From the cocoa beans to the final product, the process of creating Kit Kat bars involves several steps and takes place in a factory setting. In this video, we will explore the various stages of Kit Kat production, from the sourcing of ingredients to the packaging of the finished bars. Whether you're a chocolate lover or simply curious about the manufacturing process, this behind the scenes look at Kit Kat production is sure to be interesting and informative. In the 1930s, Roundtree of York in the UK introduced the Two Finger Kit Kat following a great demand for chocolate combinations that would bring customers, and since then, it's remained a top-selling wafer brand ever since. Nestle bought the business in 1937. Nestle sells enough Two Finger Kit Kats each year to circle the globe more than one and a half times. Over the years, massive changes and upgrades have enhanced the production and packaging of Kit Kat. At one of the Nestle factories, an average of 7 million Kit Kat bars are produced in a day, and an average of 1 billion are consumed in a year in the United Kingdom alone. So, if you do the calculations, an average of 1,900 Kit Kat are consumed in a minute. That's huge. How are all these massive productions achieved, would be the question. They are produced in factories. Apart from the raw materials, cocoa beans, three factories are important and they contribute massively to the production of Kit Kat. They all depend on one another, and a chain of activities between them leads to the effective production of Kit Kat bars. They include the chocolate factory, the wafer factory, and the assembly factory. These three factories are strategically positioned and logistically placed in such a way that all steps in the production and supply chain sit close to one another. So, how does the production start? The raw material, cocoa beans, is collected at the chocolate factory. It mainly comes from West Africa, and the collection is often in March. It's sun-dried for seven days before being shipped to the Cargill Chocolate Factory in York's Cocoa Bean Reception. From here, the production process for Kit Kat chocolate begins. The process of making the crispy Kit Kat bar starts with the cleaning of the cocoa beans collected at the chocolate factory to separate dirt from the cocoa bean after which, the process of deshelling starts and involves the use of a series of rolls to crush the cocoa beans and release the cocoa nib. What's next after we have the cocoa nib? The cocoa nib is delivered to the oven, where heat and pressure help release the integral parts needed for further processing, which is the chocolate liquor. The chocolate liquor contains both cocoa butter and cocoa solids. The remaining solid after the extraction of the chocolate liquor is the bitter cocoa powder sold in supermarkets. So, how is the chocolate formed? Different chocolate recipes are formed from a mixture of cocoa butter, cocoa powder, sugar, milk, vegetable fat, and other unique ingredients peculiar to each company. In the process of making chocolate, a lot of ingredients are involved, and each has its function. Cocoa butter can be substituted and coupled with accessible vegetable fat. These two factors can help reduce the cost of chocolate products and make them accessible to as many people as possible. However, there are numerous regulations about labeling when introducing vegetable fat, and the restrictions depend on the countries. For instance, in European countries, according to the Chocolate Directive, Directive 2036 EC, up to 5% cocoa butter equivalent CBE can still be called chocolate, but in the United States, the cocoa butter equivalent is not allowed for any chocolate. So, we can say that American chocolate with vegetable fat or European chocolate with more than 5% CBE is called candy chocolate. Enough of the details, let's continue with the process of making great chocolate. When all the ingredients are blended, conching begins by grinding the chocolate particles into smaller pieces to give them a better mouthfeel. So, it's safe to say that the best chocolate with the best mouth feel has a longer conching time. And, at the end of the process, the chocolate is formed in liquid. The next step is tempering the liquid chocolate formed from conching to ensure that all the chocolate has melted. It involves increasing the temperature and then, this is followed by decreasing the temperature to around 27 degrees Celsius, depending on the recipe. The temperature is then raised to around 31 degrees Celsius to reduce crystallization, as crystallization affects the quality of chocolate. It appears as a gray layer on the chocolate or manifests as a loss of chocolate shine. All these factors reduce chocolate's attractiveness and hence must be prevented. 
our chocolate without crystallization is ready. The waffle factory is where the journey continues. The making of waffles starts with the flour being mixed with water to create a batter, which is then transferred to waffle lanes, where the batter takes the shape of big waffle sheets. The waffle sheet is carried by conveyor belts to a large oven, which bakes the waffle at 150 degrees Celsius. It is then cooled before being covered with the waffle filling in between. The next set of questions will be about how and what the filling in between the waffle is. Well, it's lighter in color, softer, and crunchier, with the Kit Kat mashup and some chocolate on top. The filling is made from the chocolate bar, which has some defects that are mashed up and mixed with chocolate. The three-layer waffle is made in the same way as a three-layer sandwich, with bread serving as the waffle and hamburger serving as the filling. A rich, creamy cocoa-based praline coating is spread on top of the chocolate as the water sheets advance to the next stage, when another wafer sheet is instantly added from above. To add another layer to the wafer, this is repeated. Following controlled processing, this is then carefully cut into either a two-finger wafer or a four-finger wafer. Now, let's move on to the last stage in the final factory, the assembly factory. The assembly factory is where chocolate and waffles meet, and a great Kit Kat bar is made. The chocolate is pumped into a mold with waffles deposited into it, and a final layer of chocolate covers it, forming a picture of a waffle in between the chocolate. The resulting Kit Kat bar is then cooled. The formed Kit Kat are then packaged, which is the last stage of the production in the factory. And the common process involves wrapping the Kit Kat bar with silver foil and then placing it in the Kit Kat pack, which is more often than not red. It is worth noting that all the processes of packaging are automated from the onset to the last part of packaging into an appropriate box size that is ready to be shipped out for storage and distribution. In conclusion, the process of making Kit Kat bars involves several steps, from sourcing ingredients to packaging the finished product, from the cocoa beans to the crisp wafers to the smooth, creamy chocolate coating. Each element is carefully selected and crafted to create the delicious snack we know and love. Next time you take a bite of a Kit Kat bar, remember all the hard work and attention to detail that goes into this delicious creation.